Hi everyone, this is Nuala O'Connor here in Galway. I'm going to read the very first short chapter of Nora, which is set on the original Bloomsday, the 16th of June 1904, which is the first day that James Joyce and Nora Barnacle walked out together. The chapter is called Mugglin. We walk along by the Liffey as far as Rings End. The river smells like a piss pot spilling its muck to the sea. We stop by a wall, Jim in his sailor's cap, looking like a Swede, me in my wide brim straw, trying to throw the provinces off me. Out there are the Mugglin rocks, Jim says, pointing out to sea. They have the shape of a woman lying on her back. He looks to me to see if I've taken his meaning. I have. And our two mouths crash together and it's all swollen tongues and drippy spit and our fronts pressed hard and a tight bunched feeling between my legs. His hands travel over my bodice and squeeze, making me gasp. Oh, Jim is all I can manage to say, and I step away from him. You have no natural shame, Nora, he says. And he's coming at me now with his thing out of his trousers and in his hand, that one-eyed manine he's no doubt very fond of. It looks, I think, like a plum dressed in a snug coat. No natural shame, I say. Don't be annoying me. Do you think because I'm a woman that I should feel nothing, want nothing, know nothing? But I dip my nose to his neck for a second, the better to breathe his stale porter, lemon soap smell, span new to me. Jim squints and smiles. I kneel on the ground before him, my face before his tender manny and glance up at him. Jim pushes his roundy glasses up his nose, the better to see my mouth close over it. The taste is of salt and heat, the feeling is thick and animal. I draw back and peck the length of it with my lips, I stand up. There, I say, there's a kiss as shameful as Judas's. And don't tell me it isn't exactly what you wanted, Jim Joyce. A groan. He wants that bit more, of course. But that might be enough for today, our first time to walk out together. We kiss again and he lingers in my mouth wanting to enjoy the taste of himself on my tongue. His paws travel over me front and back. Oh, but he's relentless. So I unbutton him, put my hand into his drawers and wrap cool fingers around his heat. A gasp. You've made a man of me today, Nora, he says. A coddled whisper, and I smile. It's rare to have a fellow say such a thing. And I feel a small bit of power rise up through me, a small bit of joy. Jim fixes his clothes. I hold out my hand and Jim takes it. And together we walk on. Thank you for listening.